Anovar, the wonder steroid. Is it really? Let's see about that. This video is about Anovar, a very old and classic oral steroid produced in America in the 1960s. In this video, I will present, in summary, the incredible derivative of DHD named Anovar, designed to be much more anabolic versus androgenic, with no estrogenic or progestonic effects. Conceived to be safe, with an incredible safety profile, considered to be, versus other oral anabolic steroids, used by men and women with less androgenicity and considered safety profile. And then of course my experiences clinically with this medicine as the anabolic doc for the past 10 years, specializing in ethical care of men using anabolic steroids. The history of Anovar, described in 1962, soon came to market years later by Sara Lee Drug Company. It was thought to be safely used by women and children even. Very interesting. This is the 1960s. Over the course of that time period, through the 60s, into the 70s, into the 80s, this was the classic oral anabolic steroid. I have interviewed and cared for expert bodybuilders and powerlifters from the golden era. And they told me that they use this medicine in addition to some other medicines, steroids like testosterone, exclusively. And some of these powerlifters I've interviewed and cared for were some of the strongest men on earth. In 1989, because of public concern of the use of this drug in athletic performance and cheating, it was taken off the market. And for years it was off the market. Back in 1995, it came back in as Oxandrin. And it came back in with an orphan drug status, which is a very specific and unique utility how a drug company will bring a medicine to market. It's typically for rare in circumstances that are extraordinary, like AIDS wasting, alcoholic hepatitis, and Turner syndrome for girls. Next, the pharmacology and the chemical structure. This is a DHT derivative androgen anabolic steroid. Of course, it has the methyl group addition on the 17th carbon. This diminishes the first pass effect, enabling it to stay in the system like other oral anabolic steroids. Number two, which is incredible, the substitution of the second carbon in the A ring with an oxygen atom increases the anabolic activity in this incredible, very unique oral steroid. No other steroid has this exact molecular structure. And because of this molecular structure, it is resistant to the metabolism of 3-hydroxysteroid dehydrogenase in skeletal muscle. This is what makes this steroid up to 600% more anabolic than testosterone. It's already 5-alpha reduced steroid. It does not aromatize. It does not convert to DHT. There's no progestational activity. So therefore, there's much less, if almost no water gain. You get this incredible lean, hard look on this medicine versus Dianabol, for an example. It's used for cutting and bulking with other steroids, historically and classically, and even today. Medical uses, it's used legitimately, although because of politics, we don't see this, and I don't use it for this way. I want to make that very clear. I do not use this medicine medically. This is historic. 
weight gain, status post illness, status post surgery, severe weight loss and cachexia from surgery, infectious disease status, traumas, and long-term corticosteroid use. Very interesting. Prednisone used for asthma, rheumatologic diseases will debilitate people. This is theoretically a medicine for that kind of use. It's also used for bone pain with postmenopausal women with severe osteoporosis and of course AIDS wasting. But I have seen this and every doctor knows this, it's used in burn ICUs. I've had a patient in an ICU burn center with horrific burns on his body and we asked them to use this and they did in the intensive care unit. Side effects of this drug. Amazing. This drug is really not metabolized in the liver. It's the only oral anabolic steroid that has this property. So therefore, it's metabolized mainly through the kidney. This is incredible. This I wasn't even aware of years ago. So because of this, it's thought to have minimal liver toxicity versus other oral alkylated anabolic steroids. You do see a, a transaminase elevation. The LFTs go up but it's transient and it comes back to normal when they come off the drug. There's in theory and including studies supporting this with medical use for many, many months to even years, there's less to minimal end liver disease and cholestatic disease. Like other steroids, like, like other oral anabolic steroids, you'll see severe liver disease. No liver cyst. You don't see pileosis hepatis in those blood filled cysts and no tumor production, either benign or metastatic or dangerous liver hepatomas. Amazing. This is amazing. Is it really true? Be careful. We don't know. It does aromatize. And so therefore, you're not going to get much fluid production. There's no theoretical gynecomastia. There's no progestational activity. So therefore, sexual issues on this drug are definitely going to be less. And clinically, historically, anecdotally, from my experiences with thousands of men, I think this is true. Because it's already a reduced DHT derivative, it won't be further reduced by 5 alkyl and therefore it's not active. And therefore, the androgenicity of this steroid is low. So in theory, you get less male pattern balding, less effect on the prostate, and less acne. Is it true? Not necessarily, clinically. And again, the side effect of anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadism still exists. Cardiovascular side effects. This is because of the double-edged sword of this not being an estrogenic steroid. You see debilitation and severe reductions in the HDL and increase in the LDL. And this, my guess is, because of this less estrogenic activity, that's a double-edged sword. That's incredible. I've conceived this. I've seen this. Less water retention and therefore less hypertension. So that could be good. But overall, when you use this drug for a long-term period on the cardiac system, two things I'm concerned for that I have seen over long-term use in men. I've seen LVH because the heart tissue, the myocardial tissue does grow. That's left ventricular hypertrophy. And that's going to lead to early heart failure, diastolic heart failure and systolic heart failure. It's been produced in studies. And we also worry about the myocardial, the endothelial disease production and destruction leading to plaque progression and myocardial infarction very, very concerning on the endothelial, that incredible wrapping inside your coronary artery. We have to be very careful about this. And in summary, this medicine is certainly historic, used today by women, probably more than men. It's still used for limited periods because it's an oral steroid. I still see side effects from this. And the biggest side effect I see is young men coming off this drug and suffering a withdrawal syndrome. This definitely produces anabolic steroid-induced hypogonadal systems failure. I see men withdrawing off this. 
with or without PCT. I see women suffering with male pattern balding, facial changes, voice changes, breast reductions in the natural adipose tissue in the form of their breast, clitoral changes, and I see women suffering on and off this drug with sexual changes. This medicine is very powerful. This medicine will be with us for a very long time, and I want people to be very safe. This is educational. Please see a doctor. I'm always there for consultation. Please enjoy my videos. Thank you so much. Dr. Thomas O'Connor here. I'm glad you made it to the end of the video. If you liked it, hit the like button and please subscribe to our channel. And I look forward to bringing you more cool and interesting videos just like this in the future. Stay strong and healthy. Thank you.